the next one question number 16 drawn from gravitation and this is very very straightforward one of the most straightforward questions that you get a planet of mass m has two natural satellites with mass m1 and m2 and their radii are this Ignoring the gravitational force between the satellites, that means we need to consider only the force between satellite and the planet. You see, V is the speed orbital, L is the angular momentum, K is the kinetic energy, T is the time period. And even this ratio has been given, M1 is to M2, that's, let's see here if it has slipped, yes, M1 is to M2 is 2 and R1 is to R2 is 1 by 4. So that has been given. M1 is to M2 is 2 while R1 is to R2 is 1 by 4 and we need to calculate the ratio of all these terms V, L, kinetic energies and everything. So let's see. To calculate first the ratio of the speed let's just write here M1 by M2 has been given as 2 and R1 by R2 has been given as 1 by 4. Let me just check out. This will help me to avoid scrolling time and again. Okay, V1 is to V2. Now, you know, the orbital speed is inversely proportional to the radius with the root because, you know, V is under root of G mass of planet by R. So here, V1 upon V2 would be root R2 upon R1. So therefore, you would be getting V1 upon V2 as 2 is to 1 and that is going to give me the option as 3. So for P, the option would be 3. The value is 2 is to 1 and here that 2 is to 1 is given in option number 3. Next, L1 upon L2. This is M1 by M2, V1 by V2 and R1 by R2. So just a simple calculation. M1 by M2 has been given as 2 and V1 by V2 right now we had calculated that is 2 and r1 by r2 that's coming out to be 1 by 4 in other word the ratio will exactly come out to be 1 so for option number q ratio 1 that means the correct would be with list number 2 option number 2 now the next one kinetic energy if i see kinetic energy that will be m1 v1 square by m2 v2 square and let's now see this is going to be m1 by m2 v1 square by v2 square is going to be r2 by r1 because v is inversely proportional to root of r so squaring that root would be over m1 by m2 that's coming out to be 2 and r2 by r1 that's coming out to be 4 so the value would be 8 and 8 exists in option number four. So for R, the correct option is option number four. Likewise, T1 by T2. Now you know, T1 square by T2 square would be equals to R1 cube by R2 cube. And now I get T1 square by T2 square is, that's going to be one by 64. So T1 by T2 would be one by eight and there lies in option number one. So for S, that will be option number one. This did not have multiple listing. So three, two, four, one, respectively, for P, Q, R, S. Three, two, four, one. All right, three, two, four, one, I find in option number B. So for this particular question, question number 16, the correct answer is option number B. Let's move to question number 17. Question number 17 and from thermodynamics. So at least this is a confirmed one that thermodynamics is quite a fertile area, right? So here you get one mole of a monoatomic ideal gas undergoes four thermodynamic processes. Among that, one is isobaric, other is isochoric, one is isothermal and adiabatic. So it's been given that each process would be isobaric, isochoric, isothermal, adiabatic. Now we need to list the options. So here what I can see is process number two is sure it is isobaric and process number three if you see that's isochoric and 
out of 4 and 1, you could see 4 is isothermal because P1, V1 is P2, V2. And 1 has to be adiabatic because that's a remaining 1. And you could see the slope of isothermal and adiabatic, you can always compare. The magnitude of the slope for adiabatic has to be greater than that of isothermal. So we could easily list out the processes. Now let's try to see. Work done by the gas is zero. So if you say work done by the gas is zero, that has to be there in isochoric. Next, temperature of the gas remains unchanged, right? Isothermal. Now you may be thinking that the question is getting, but this is how it goes. No heat is exchanged between the gas and its surrounding. So this is the adiabatic. And finally, work done by the gas is 6P0 V0. For this, I need to see here, work done by the gas is 6P0 V0 that can directly be seen that it's valid for isobaric. Because for isobaric, this is 3P0, this is 2V0, so the area under PV graph. And if work done for this isobaric is 6P0 V0, for the rest will not be 6P0 V0 because the rest one, the work done has to be less than 6P0 V0. So straightforward, for the given option, you could see that this one is satisfying the condition for isobaric. So here we could very easily understand and you can match up the option number C is going to be the correct one. So for question number 17, the correct option is option number C. Now it's time to go and see the final question, question number 18. 